In this segment, we'll illustrate the pressure matching task that we talked about in class where we use a leak tube, and actually a straw works very conveniently uh, because you can bend it at any point and control the amount of airflow leaking out of it. But recall we said it was very important to have a leak tube so the person could not build up pressure in the mouth and hold it there, let's say, with the tongue, tongue tip or blocking in the back of the mouth with the tongue. So we'll now look at the scope and see a typical task we would have for a subject. We might want them to generate, we can go to the scope, might want them to generate five centimeters of water pressure for five seconds. We call that's what we use as a reasonable goal for normal production. And this sweep is moving at one per second. So I'll just put the pressure tube in my mouth and the leak tube and I'll do the task. So there was five centimeters of water pressure for about five seconds. The normal, of course, can do this at any level within uh, 50 centimeters of water pressure, a very simple task, pressure recording uh, for estimating subglottal air pressure. And the main components are the pressure sensing tube, which is placed at an angle behind the lips. And I prefer to place it between the teeth because the sounds produced will not touch the tube in that case, like that pa, 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 and so on. So this tube goes down to a pressure transducer, and the pressure transducer then is output is displayed on the oscilloscope here. So I'll give you a sample now of just saying pa, pa, pa repeatedly. And we'll look at this waveform. Pa, 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 pa. Okay, first of all, zero pressure is baseline <clears throat> at this point. And then this line going all the way across is five centimeters of water pressure. So with each closure of the lips, the pressure rises abruptly, stays at that height until the lips are released for the P, then comes down during the ah, rises abruptly again, and repeats, so on. Notice the AC signals riding in here in each case as the voicing had yet not stopped, but toward the trailing edges, the uh, air pressure <coughs> is now balanced in the mouth and in the lungs if we make the following assumptions we talked about in class, namely that the velopharynx is closed and the vocal folds are sufficiently adducted, and thirdly, that the lips are completely sealed during the bilabial closure. Notice as I repeat this pattern, at least in the normal case, how rather consistent, rather consistent these pressure peaks are. Pa 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 pa. Pa 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 pa. So in my case, I'm generating about seven and a half centimeters of water pressure in the mouth for these bilabial voiceless stops, which are very good estimates then of the subglottal air pressure being generated <coughs> beneath the vocal folds. Also, we can illustrate with this that subglottal pressure in the normal is a fairly uh, strong correlate, rather direct correlate, of the loudness level of the voice. So we'll repeat this. I'll give you a, a, a medium voice and then a much louder voice, and you'll see the pressure essentially double. Pa, 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 pa. Pa, 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 pa. So here is the conversational voice, and then essentially double the loudness. So you might want to train a given subject to higher levels. Very simple task for the normal to do. 
And it's a nice training task for the various dysarthric uh, patients. Now we'll illustrate the use of a U-tube manometer for estimating subglottal air pressure. Here again, we use our leak tube. And now the other tube is an oral manometer, U-shaped, that you fill with water and put a centimeter rule piece of paper behind. So I simply blow on both the manometer tube and the leak tube at the same time like this. Now we'll do this up close. My target in this case is going to be this line, which is equivalent to five centimeters of water pressure. Watch how easily a normal can generate this and hold it in the presence of a leak. Notice also that this <clears throat> on the paper is actually only two and a half centimeters of water. The displacement up the right side. But it's the height of the water column from the top here to its bottom here as the pressure is being generated that is the actual measurement of five centimeters of water pressure. So I'll do it again. Watch the water column height. We're gonna talk a bit about a palatal lift here and also the uh, gag desensitization procedure that uh, we discussed earlier. This is not uh, an actual palatal lift. It was built for me. And you can see on this close-up that the tail portion is, is rounded and down. And obviously, that's not what we want. As we talked about in class, that extension should basically come out at least at the level of the palatal plane, if not higher. But this is a tail piece, obviously. This is the retainer portion with the clasps. And it's a chance to show the, the desensitization procedure, which as we said, you start the alveolar ridge and just do a slow rotation backward along the hard palate, as far back as you can go until you just start to trigger a gag, then back off, start the procedure over, gradually approaching more and more of the pharynx but it's important not to gag the subject, but just to the point of starting the gag. 